Honkai Star Rail is progressing through its first year rather steadily, almost to the conclusion of version 1. And now that we have a ton of new units compared to the original roster, I figured now's a good time to finally make a video on who I believe to be the top 5 most important characters in the game. Given the circumstantial nature of these games, the community is always at odds on who is definitively the best. You can find any case for one unit outperforming another in a certain field, and so I've decided rather than talk about which characters are the strongest or objectively the best, let's reframe this into which characters are the most important for a player to have. I should clarify that this doesn't necessarily mean the choices on this list are must-pulls. While there is challenging endgame content like Difficulty 5 Storm Disaster, Mihoyo engineers the relative margin for error to be fairly generous. It's not like you need max idolons on every 5-star, perfect relic stats, fully superimposed light guns and stuff. If that were the case, no sane individual would bother playing the game. These are just characters that, in my opinion, cover the widest range of bases for the game right now and for the foreseeable future. We're gonna start with two honorable mentions before going into my top 5. First HM will be Tingyun, widely regarded as the best 4-star character in the game. She has one job, and does that job really well. She busts up one unit on a team to deal tons of damage. Her skill gains a significant attack boost along with follow-up lightning damage on the next move that scales with their attack, so you can think of it almost like slapping an extra 40% attack scaling on the next hit. But the PS3 resistance of her kit is her trademark ultimate, a huge battery followed by a total damage boost for two turns. She is without question one of the best hyper carry buffers in the game, juicing up her teammates' attack power, then juicing up their total damage on top of that. What makes her the best 4-star in the game is that her strength is not dependent on her own kit, it's dependent on whoever she's supporting. And of all the 4-star supports, she gets the best general stuff. Attack power and damage can be utilized by everyone in the game, compared to someone like Asta, whose speed boost ultimate is good, but not applicable by everyone, or someone like Yu Kong, who gives a crap ton of crit stats, but it can be hard to maintain her buff state. Ting Yun, on the other hand, is super easy to use and super powerful, making her a solid fit for just about any team. Obviously, she's limited to buffing only one person, but so far, most teams only feature one damage dealer anyway. Hands down, one of the best free-to-play supports in the game and will probably stay that way for a long time. Second honorable mention is Lo Ta, the healingest healer that ever healed. Like Ting Yun, this guy has one job, heal, but he heals so much that so long as you don't literally get one-shotted, he will restore you back to full in some way, shape, or form. Lo Cha's restorative value comes in two ways, his insurance policy and battle healing. For the former, up to once every two turns, whenever an ally's HP drops below half, he automatically triggers the skill, healing and cleansing one debuff off them, meaning as long as he's not impaired, he can heal people even outside of his turn. For the latter, after gaining two stacks of Abyss Flower, he can generate a field that makes it so whenever anyone attacks, they're healed for a large amount and a smaller amount is given to the entire team. In other words, by constantly attacking, you constantly restore HP. He's arguably the most SP efficient healer in the game because of this, which makes him very good for teams that have very SP hungry units like Sila and Lunai Dan Hung. The reason I put him in HM though is because, apart from dispelling one buff from all enemies with his ultimate, that's really all Luo Cha does, just heal. Healing is an essential part of the game, mind you, but I feel like it's easier for him to get pushed down as you get more and more healers who can do more stuff. He's still one of the most widely used characters in the game though, especially in Memory of Chaos and Swarm Disaster, so he's well deserving of an honorable mention. Taking off the actual list, which I should mention is not in any particular order, we have Silver Wolf, Star Rail's current premier debuffer. She excels at setting up her carries to deal as much damage to a single target as possible while diminishing the threat level of the target in question. For some of you, this may seem like an odd choice. At the moment, Silver Wolf is primarily deployed in tandem with Sila, who makes the best use of her debuffs in single target fights, and mostly in mono quantum teams to funnel more strength into her through the Pentaconi Planetary set which might give her the impression of being niche and not so much an all-purpose unit. So, let me elaborate on why I believe she deserves a spot on this list. It's become very clear over each version that breaking enemy toughness is a critical part of Star Wars gameplay, as it offers both offensive and defensive benefits, especially in more difficult fights. Silver Wolf is the only character right now who can artificially implant additional weaknesses onto an enemy, allowing her to make any unit an efficient choice against any enemy. Entire fights can be won or lost on the basis of if your opponent is breakable by your carry, so having someone who can force that element onto them means that Silver Wolf can increase the range of use cases of theoretically any character, now and in the future. That alone is what lends credence to her value. If there are other hyper carry centric units that can weaponize her the same way Sela can, or perhaps in their own way, by proxy, Silver Wolf becomes stronger too. In addition, she has a ton of ways to amplify her team's damage output. The benefit of debuffs is that it saves you the trouble of having to cover your entire team. For example, if you give plus 50 attack to one ally, only that one ally receives a damage buff. Meanwhile, if you give minus 50 defense to one enemy, that effectively means plus 50 attack for all four members of your party since all of them can attack that same enemy. So sometimes, lowering the enemy's stats is more efficient than raising yours. Silver Wolf has just about every possible debuff you can think of. Her skill lowers elemental resistances of all types and the type that she applies on the target. 
Her ultimate breaks enemy defense by a significant amount as she can lower attack, defense, and or speed whenever she attacks. Silverwolf can greatly magnify the damage of her team along with the unique ability to force elemental weaknesses onto enemies that otherwise would not have them. Definitely one of the most important characters in the game. If not right now, then in the immediate future as you get more and more damage dealers of different kinds. Might as well talk about her lookalike next. On top of sharing the same voice actress and looking very similar, they share the same trait of growing stronger based on who they're enabling. Bronya is the antithesis of Silver Wolf in gameplay. Instead of crippling the enemy unit, she supercharges her teammate to deal as much damage as humanly possible. This makes her a more straightforward support, but in no way does that infringe on her usability, quite the opposite. It's what makes her, presently, one of the most all-purpose units in the entire game. The argument of debuffing being more efficient than buffing is true only if you're fighting a single enemy for long periods of time, such as a boss. If fighting multiple enemies or waste of them, buffing your ally is more efficient on account of said ally exerting their enhanced power on all of them. And that's what Branya does. On top of dispelling one debuff, her skill drastically increases her teammates' damage output for their next turn, while immediately advancing their turn order to be next in line. This means if your carry unit attacks and then Branya goes next, she can give up her turn to let that carry unit strike again but with even more power. Then she can further augment her team's DPS through her monstrous ultimate, granting a huge amount of bonus attack to all allies while increasing their crit damage as well. Total damage, crit damage, and attack. Virtually every offensive stat is boosted, letting her carry deal exquisite damage. Branya is the ultimate hyper carry support. The buffs alone would be enough to make her a strong character, but her ability to grant an extra turn to her team is what tips her over the edge of being almost essential to have in this game. Not just for increasing DPS, but in survival scenarios too. If your team suffers critical damage, she can turn to advance your healer for emergency for a state. Or if, you know, the enemy is about to unleash a devastating attack, you can have her advance a crowd controller like Chapard and try to freeze them or one of your other units to apply the last bit of damage to weakness break them. So many ways her skill can be used that it's kind of sadistic for Mihoyo to have her as a standard banner unit so that your only way of getting her is by losing 50-50 or intentionally pulling on the standard banner which you should never do. On the plus side, being a permanent 5 star does mean you have a chance to acquire her as she's always available. And in the long run, you have a chance to pull additional copies of her to upgrade her idolence, which can definitely be put to good use. Easily the best standard 5 star unit, and potentially one of the best characters in the game, period. Next unit will be Fushuan. It's safe to say that Fushuan is the best tank in Star Rail, which I guess isn't really saying much in light of her only true competition being Jepard and Fire Trailblazer, but I digress. Though ironically, she doesn't have any way to give shields, what she offers might be, or rather usually is, much better. Fushuan can redirect damage to your party members towards her, effectively increasing the maximum health of her party as she superimposes her health bar onto theirs, on top of directly increasing her team's max health and crit rate during this time. So she takes the role of both a tank and a buffer. With her skill lasting 3 turns, she can have this quote unquote shield online at all times, without starving your SP. To ensure she can withstand heavy damage, Fushuan passively reduces all damage taken for your team, and if at any point she drops below half HP, she pretty much recovers back to full. As long as you're able to cast her ultimate periodically, she's completely self-sufficient, not requiring a healer whatsoever. In fact, she is the healer. One of her traces grants a token bit of sustenance to her party with each cast of her ultimate, so in conjunction with soaking of damage for her team, she can restore the portion of health that she doesn't cover. As the cherry on top, Fushuan provides a debuff spell shield to her party, letting them resist up to one crowd control effect each time she casts her skill. The only real downside to her is that because she doesn't provide a literal shield, many blessings on the path of preservation are rendered useless on her. But that's hardly what I would call a downside, as her tanking capabilities are almost second to none. In terms of burst protection, Chapard's ultimate might beat her out, but Fushuan destroys all of the tanks in the game for her sheer consistency and small amount of support. If you're able to get your hands on her first idolin, she can amplify both crit stats or your whole party, letting her moonlight as a buffer too. And though this is not something you should prioritize, the fact that her basic attack and burst deal damage based on her health means she can contribute towards the DPS if you build sufficient health on her, so she's not just a wall. It's unlikely for Fushuan to be powercraft anytime soon, and if you harbor any desire to take on endgame content, having her on your team will make your life a lot easier. Unit number 4 will be Ren Mei, our newest addition to the roster and what an addition she is. First and foremost, the reason why she's on this list is because she's the hottest character in the game and I'll kill anyone who says otherwise. First and foremost, the reason why she's on this list is different than that of the previous three. Ren Mei is not good for being the best at a particular niche. She's a buffer in the same fashion as Bronya, but more general. Though Bronya does have AoE buffing, most of her strength comes from funneling everything into one character, underscored by her essentially trading her turn for an extra turn on your carry. Ren Mei, on the other hand, is full team buffing and full enemy team debuffing. She increases total damage for her team with her skill and gives them more break efficiency, and with her ultimate she gives them all type res penetration and she increases both the effects and duration of weakness breaks on enemies. 
Then with her talent, she gives bonus speed and follow-up break damage. Basically, while Bronya and Silver Wolf specialize in turbocharging and turbo nerfing one specific target respectively, Renmei charges everyone on her team and nerfs everyone on the enemy team, making her a more comfortable support character to use. She's like a Swiss army knife. If you're just looking for someone to cover all bases, Renmei's a character for you. And just like the other supports, she scales in value based on the carry. You could argue that her Jack of All Trades playstyle makes her predisposed to getting power corrupt if in the future someone comes out with better specific buffs, but that is a very high bar to climb. Renmei gives so many things that you can't really find on anyone else except her. Aside from her buffing capabilities, she focuses on Weakness Break, which we discussed earlier is a core facet of Star L's gameplay. She can break enemy gauges extremely quickly and make them last longer, while at the same time being usable in almost every single team in the game. That alone makes her valuable, whether she is or isn't the most efficient choice. Granted, that's not to say she's not efficient. As of 1.6, in my opinion, she's top 3, so she is exceptionally good. But my justification for putting her on this list is not that she's good, not entirely anyway. It's that she's compatible with any team. Doesn't matter which damage dealer you use, Sila, Jingyuan, Jingliu, Blade, Kafka, Lunai, Danhang, or Genti, Renmei can efficiently support all of them. Yet another excellent support character that you'll be making very liberal use of in the months or perhaps years to come. Final choice on this list is Huo Huo. Between Luo Cha and Hua Hua, I find the latter to have more future value because she does more things than just heal. For one, Hua Hua has an auto cleanse. If her passive talent is active, which most of the time it is, at the start of any friendly unit's turn or when they use their ultimate, she automatically heals a small bit of health and more importantly, dispels a debuff. Any other unit with the cleanse has to actively use an ability or take their turn in order to do so, making things awkward if they themselves are disabled. Hua Hua, on the other hand, can cleanse even if she's disabled, provided her passive talent's in effect. That's one big advantage that she has over the other healers. The second advantage is her ultimate. Though it has an exorbitant 140 energy cost, it's kind of justified, as she instantly batteries 20% of her other three party members' ultimates while simultaneously giving a strong attack boost. And if you manage to pull her first Eidolon, then she can also augment everyone's speed by having her talent active, which again, it almost always is. This enables Hua Hua to borrow from the Harmony Nihility Unit's characteristic of scaling and value based on their damage dealers. Besides Ting Yun, Hua Hua is one of the few support units in the game that can battery your ultimate. So if your main DPS is someone who spams their ult on a regular basis like Argenti, having that extra bit of energy recharge will come in handy. Not to mention, perma cleansing your team so that your tempo doesn't get disrupted. It comes down to what you prioritize. For some, Luo Cha's insurance policy and battle healing field makes him more future-proof when it comes to being an actual healer. But I think Hua Hua's ability to do something other than heal is what will make her more valuable for you in the long run. Alrighty, so that's my list of top 5 most important characters in Honkai Star Rail, with two honorable mentions. You may have noticed that all 7 choices are support characters. Personally, I believe supports are more valuable because not only do conventional teams consist of 1 damage dealer and 3 supports, but supports can be used in more teams, whereas damage dealers are ultimately replaceable. There will come a day when Sila, Jingliu, and Lunai Danhang get power corrupt by stronger damage dealers even if they're not of the same path, element, or playstyle but it's much harder for supports to get power crept. So you should focus on getting all the best supports in Star Rail. By the way, for you Japard, Lynx, Bailu, Pela, Welt, and Topaz lovers, don't worry, just because I didn't include them on this list doesn't mean they're bad. You're still more than welcome and encouraged to keep using them. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this list, if you agree or disagree with it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Varsverm, join my Discord server, and check out my other Honka Star Rail content if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.